Bienvenue à Comment gagner de l'argent et comment créer une entreprise et augmenter vos revenus avec Glendon Cameron. Ever have one of those days that you just didn't want to do anything? I mean, seriously, did not want to do nothing, but you had things to do. And on one of those days, I like to uh, term them as technical difficulties when they happen. They don't happen that often, but when they happen, man, woke up this morning. It really started yesterday. Email clients not working because they got hit by some kind of uh, DDoS attack. Then I got really a slew of strange, weird, like it's the full moon out type emails. Just things I wanted to do. It just wasn't working out. Then I had a new project. You know, it was a little struggle this morning. Just seriously, I wanted to take the day off and just not do anything but i knew that would make things worse so what i did is i pushed through i pushed through everything uh, the, the original goal if it was to do 500 i pushed to do a thousand and the day still kind of struggled <laughs> it didn't get better mood wise but i was making progress and it got to a point where I needed to release some stress. And I didn't want to go to the gym today, but the gym was on the schedule. And it's like I went. And I got in the gym, just dragging ass, dragging ass. Then I was like, you know what? I was going to do a back loading workout. I'm going to press. I'm going to push myself. And I ended up doing, having one of the best days I've ever had in the gym. Hit pretty much 90% of what was on my sheet which was a good day, you know, I rarely hit 100 because I'm always pushing, so I'm not, you know, unless it's a back load day, yeah, I'll hit 100, but the thing is, we all have those days where we don't want to do anything, and for some people, those days turn into weeks, months, and years, and that's what happens when you start a business, like the day that I had today is typically what happens when you start a business. You push in, the contractor doesn't show up, or code enforcement's fucking with you, or you know, you, you thought you needed X amount of information to get your business license, but no, you actually needed B and X and Z, A to get your information. And you just get very, very frustrated. And it's very, very easy to give up. It's extremely easy to give up and fall back into that comfort level because, like I said, now I'm back on point because it's, uh, like I said, uh, I had to cancel the, today's Q&A because of technical difficulties. Just wasn't going to work out. And there was other stuff and uh, I'm getting emails left and right like, hey, where, where, is, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? And I was like, I can't do it. I can't pull the rabbit out of that. And only now, here it is, it's 4.15. This started at 6 this morning. Only now, the whole point I'm trying to make is it, it's you do not have to be in a good mood to perform. You do not have to be passionate to perform. I will say that if every day is like this, you might give it up. Uh, I wouldn't blame you. But many people take the absence of ease as a sign of you should not be doing the thing that you're doing. And I say bullshit on that. It just means that you don't have the information that you need or the expertise, skill level, whatever. You just don't have that stuff. But you will not get it by giving up. And now I have people doing stupid human tricks. Uh, somebody just stopped in the middle of the road. There's no one in front of them and they're just stopped. Maybe they're texting, I don't know. But uh, someone uh, just gave them an angry look and now they're moving. But the thing is, if you want to be successful in your life, there's going to be technical difficulties. There's going to be these days. There's going to be these events. There's going to be this stuff, all of this stuff 
that will just make you want to say, oh, no mas, man, no mas, no mas. You know, I want to just uh, kick back, pop a cool one, and really do nothing. That's not going to, to help you. That is not going to help you. Because I used to have days like this all of the time. I mean, all of the time. And it really wasn't so much the day as it was me. If that makes any sense. It, it was me. Uh, frustration level was high because I didn't have skill sets that granted me the life that I wanted. You know, and many people are like, oh, Glendon is balling. I am not balling. I am just free. I place a high premium on free. I think more so than most people because... I think I am totally unfit to work a job now. I don't even think I can help anyone find a job because I don't know how that shit works anymore. I mean, I'm not being arrogant or stupid. It's just I have not filled out an application or a resume in I don't know when. I don't even know what what would I put on that shit. It's like author, videographer, former store. I mean, I have no clue. I have no clue. But when you're in that situation of technical difficulties, when you have those moments where you just want to say, fuck this shit. I had one of those moments this morning because I was messing around with a new platform and it didn't want to do what it wanted, to, what I needed to do. And it, it actually my internet connection went out on me and I spent like about two minutes getting pissed. And I was like, oh, it's not the software, it's the internet connection. I'm telling you, this morning was a trip. It was just total trip. But I'm back in my happy place right now, and I'm going to continue to push because everything that I had planned, I just dimes it times two. And this is the Jedi mind trick that I play on myself. If I times it times two, and I only, um, say, hit 75%, which means I get the original goal, that's the 50%, then I get a 25% increase, I've actually hit plan plus, if that makes any sense. So I'm actually, on the day that I didn't want to do shit, I actually do more than that normal because you got to keep pushing. You cannot um, capitulate to mediocrity or your lower instinct of, I want that comfort, I want that ease, I don't want any drama, I don't really want it to be difficult because the person that you become will become, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen during difficult times. Anyone can be happy and well-adjusted when shit's good. How do you perform when things go bad? That is gonna be the tale of who you are. How do you perform when things go bad when you have to perform when you don't feel like it? When you have to uh, put yourself in a situation of doing what you need to do when the world is like conspiring against you and saying no we don't want you to do that man that's just a sign you're on the right path the more obstacles thrown in your way the, the greater the war think about it as i uh, put together the new book which draws friday as part of the uh, technical difficulties and it's gonna happen friday trust me it's gonna be damn good too is choice just like I had a day that it really it wasn't a day it was moments within that day many times people claim and cover a day with more stuff that's happening more stuff mentally that's happening than physically or actually events of the day such as if one bad thing happens in the morning and then your whole day is just messed up all day long that that's a choice because if thing after thing after thing after thing after thing, which happened to me today, and I refused to submit to whatever that was, because it happens, it happens to everyone. It's just weird stuff that you just wake up one day and the blocks don't line up and the water's not hot or the water's not cold, whatever you prefer. And these things just keep going on. It's a cycle of events that you don't want. I'm not even going to put a label of good or bad on it. I'm just going to say a cycle of events that you don't want. I mean, you may not want a chocolate cake right now. 
but we all know chocolate cake is good. But you don't want it, so it's not bad. You just don't want it. And that's how you have to look at these events because that's how I had to refocus today several times. It's like, okay, well, we're gonna do this. Don't really care what the universe is saying. Don't really care what uh, these forces of counterproductivity are trying to do to me. But with that, what is your technical difficulty in your life? I mean, seriously, what, what, what is that thing or things that's really holding you back? And it's not a bunch of things. It's usually in the decision-making process that you have. Because if you make small decisions consistently, you make small, you make bad decisions on a small sale consistently, chances are you're going to make bad decisions on a large scale. It's not like you're like, okay, on the small stuff, you're good. And then on the bad stuff, you mess up. No, no. There, there's usually a chain of evidence to poor decision-making process. It's not this one event or this... No, no. It's usually, usually when it starts off on small stuff, like, uh, you know, bouncing checks and consistently paying late fees. I don't even know what they are. I hear they're hor they're horrendous now. I mean, 35, 40 bucks, something like that. Last time I bounced a check, shit was 15 bucks. I'll tell you how long ago that was. If you continue to do that, or you continue to go out and get high interest rate credit cards, I mean 20 something percent, or even 30 percent, even though just depend upon how that stuff is compounded per month. And you keep doing it year after year after year, you erode your buying power. Or, I mean, there, there's just there's so many things that usually lead up to not making good decisions on a larger stage, if that makes any sense. Because the big thing is, it's all an internal game. All this stuff on the outside, you know, people, I love, you know, someone pointed out that people are like watching me when I'm doing these videos and they're like, what the hell is he doing? I am just so shiny. I'm that shiny object. But everything's internal. The external life that you have is based on internal, your internal environment. The two will parallel each other. Fucked up internal environment, fucked up physical environment. You're not gonna have this awesome internal environment and then just jacked up physical environment. It's not gonna happen. It's just not gonna happen. Because what I've learned from all of my exploration into self and reading certain books is the biggest battle is the one within. It's not society. It's not, you know, if you're black. Because uh, right now, there's everyone is losing their mind over, what's his name, Donald Sterling and what he said. And I'm like, you think he's the only NBA owner who thinks like that? You think he's the only one? He was just, well, yeah, he was um, stupid for saying it. But the way I look at that situation, um, I am not losing my mind. Okay. I tell you, it's rush hour. Now, I'm normally not out here with other humans, but I mean, what they did is horrendous, it's atrocious, but the largest story is he's an old guy with a hot girlfriend and he can't get it up and she's fucking Mandingo. That's what the real issue is. All those hot, hung black guys she's hanging around, and, he, and she's fucking them, and he knows it. And he feels impotent on more level than one. Because, I mean, look at him. I mean, dude is old as dust, and she's, what, 20-something? He's a millionaire, she's 20-something, and she's pretty. Oh, uh, wonder what's going on with that? And clearly she's mixed, and like he didn't know that he was feeling up on some half-black ass? Come on. He's what I call, and I, I'm, I know I'm going to get some flack for this, but fuck it. He's what I call the benign racist. And these are the people who don't go out and hunt down black folks. They have a certain way of thinking. But this benign racist is signing the checks of a lot of black folks he actually hates. And he's making them millionaires. And this isn't to say that it's all about the money. Because everyone's like, these guys should boycott. And they shouldn't play. Uh, they're under contract. <laughs> so the only way that's going to work is everybody including the white guys who play on the team say fuck it we ain't playing for this guy that's the only way that's going to work and i don't see that happening i could be surprised i could be surprised but 
I looked at the talk over it because I looked at it. I knew where it was going to go. And at the end of the day, if you're black, what the fuck does Donald Sterling have to do with you? Uh, I know it's going to sound crazy. He, he was a, He's a stupid old man for messing around with a young girl who recorded their conversation. I mean, isn't that kind of telling you something about her? Just saying, she's a little sugar baby. I mean, he's paying her to fuck her, suck his dick, whatever she's doing. But clearly, he ain't fucking her. And that's his issue. But it's things like that that I call social distractions because everyone gets all riled up about this stuff. And, you know, I'm seriously, because uh, I had to pull myself out of the fire because I saw it. And it was a shiny object, and I was like on my high, I was on my paws running toward it, and then I had to like stop and hit myself upside the head with a rock to break my to bring back my concentration. But this is not going to go anywhere. It's going to be a big brouhaha for a little bit, and then something else is going to happen, and then we'll forget about it, or most people will forget about it, because I'm still pissed at Riley Cooper, who was supposed to get laid out by your know, black defensive cornerbacks but it didn't happen dude played and not shit happened and if you go riley cooper that's the guy that says i'm gonna beat all black people's ass bring them on when he was all high on that uh country juice at the concert most of you forgot about that shit that's what i'm talking about this is just another red herring to uh divert people's attention um but speaking of that where is your attention on your business bit of social commentary into the uh, technical difficulties because it does play in part because I've noticed since I put myself on a Facebook moratorium I'm on Facebook and I'll I, I carefully time my time on my personal page I haven't posted shit on there I don't know when and I don't really plan on it because I've put my focus and time into things that benefit me playing around on Facebook is a uh, visceral distraction that does not put money in your, your wallet doesn't make you feel better sometimes it actually makes you feel worse and you really don't get anything lasting out of it and I get a lot of flack from some family members because uh, I don't do the family thing on Facebook because you know if you're cool with me I have your phone number and if you're really cool with me I actually use that phone number and if you're super cool with me we actually meet up have dinner and hang out I know right radical right really radical that whole tertiary relationship shit of on Facebook. I mean, these aren't real relationships, people. Uh, the people that I am close to on Facebook, nine times out of ten, I've actually met. <laughs> There's a few I never met, but we're cool as shit. Yeah, you know, I'm not saying it can't happen, but for the most part, it's not. It's, it's a distraction. It's a big distraction. And it creates technical difficulties. Because... I am quantifying my time. And I want you to do this. I want you to take the next week, if you're on Facebook, everybody's not on Facebook, and I want you to measure how much time you spend on Facebook. Every time you get on Facebook, you've got a cell phone that has a timer on. Hit that timer app, hit it, and when you come off, hit it and see how much time you spend on Facebook. It may blow your mind because one of the reasons that I'm able to write these books is I don't watch television except Netflix. I am a Netflix just junkie. I'm a Netflix junkie. Love Netflix. Oh my God. It's like I don't know what my life was before Netflix. And I really don't watch a lot of television, which on the positive side is when I do turn it on, I'm easily entertained because I've never seen that shit before. It's like, ooh, this is new. Man, that's been on for years. Really? I didn't know. I didn't know. But part of your technical difficulties is where do you invest your time? Are you investing your time in things that bring you fruit? Are you plant seeds somewhere that's going to grow you a big, tall freedom tree and that's going to put out all kinds of freedom fruit and you'll just be like, ah, oh, this fruit is so tasty. Or you just uh, chewing on bitter pits of the worst of society. I'm going to say something. I actually lost a few Facebook fans, not Facebook fans, friends. People I knew because of the shit I was saying about the Real Housewives of Atlanta. I have not sat down and completely watched the show. Someone I was dating actually kind of turned it on and I ignored it. 
because that is some of the most insipid shit in the world to me. It to me shows black women at their absolute worst. I know black women are nothing like that. And what's sad is the younger group of women are gonna emulate that behavior because that's what they think it takes to be put on. But I'm, you have to make these decisions on what's gonna enter your mind. I mean, I have become in my journey to the point I just can't listen to older or some rap song I just can't listen to. I cannot listen to because when you get to this point of guarding your mental environment, your mental sandbox, what comes in is very important. All that stuff. So if you're sitting there listening to, hey, we're selling drugs, which is the theme of a lot of these songs. It's like we're selling drugs or we're doing this gangster life or this criminal life. And it's glamorized. If you listen to that over and over and you're bobbing your head in agreement, before you know it, you're going to think that behavior is cool. And I know a lot of people are like, no, it's art. And art does not influence reality. Bullshit. I'm an artist. I'm a writer. Oh, it does influence reality. That's why that shit's so powerful. It definitely influences people. Anyone that tells you that art and music does not have a great social influence is an idiot and an asshole because they clearly are trying, they are, they make music and they're trying to sell that shit to you because it does have an impact. It does. And, you know, I, I have this, this uh, fight with people on this, but I don't think that you can listen to a radio station or watch shows where people who look like you are using the most defaming language towards each other in quote terms of endearment and not come away from that shit harm, unharmed. I don't think you can. I really don't. And that's one of the reasons that I've had this stance and I, I don't use it that word. I don't think anyone, black, green, purple, whatever should be using it, but you can't tell some people that. They're like, you know, you're scared of the white man. No, I just like my mental environment to be clean. That's all. And that's not something that's going to make it clean. It's going to contaminate it. Because you'll find yourself, and this has been proven. There's this book, I cannot remember the name. I read this book when I was in uh, junior high school. And it was talking about how marketers were using photography and video embedded with subliminal and images. I mean, if you really, really sit back and look at some of this stuff from a logical perspective, does it make sense to light up a stick of tobacco that you know has a very high rate of causing cancer? You know this. This is proven. This is not joke. This is not bro like, oh, no, no. You know this. But because the marketing of that product is so incredibly adroit, you're lighting up. <laughs> you're lighting up. I mean, a lot of people around the world smoke cigarettes. This is this is a global thing. This is international because of the panache and the panache and the, it's like, hey, you're smoking. I mean, just it's a cool looking thing, and it, it's just very very unhealthy. But that's the power of marketing, and these songs and this information is marketing. All this stuff is marketing. It is all marketing from the clothes they wear to the lifestyle. And um, I think his name, uh, all of this marketing, all of this uh, information that is put on all the play and it's just everywhere has an impact on your mental environment. And now what does this have to do with technical difficulties? Well, uh, my daughter, is just somewhat startled that I work in silence a lot. I mean, no television on, no background noise. It's just, I am able to focus on the task in hand. And I've learned that a lot of people don't have focus. They cannot focus on anything because they are so technically distracted with all of this stuff that is going on in the world. There are so many things that are pulling at your attention and as it pulls and splinters your attention, it actually fractures the information as it goes into your mind. So you're getting, you know, trust me on this, because 
when uh, you are listening to information, right, and you start speaking to someone else, even if it's for five seconds, you missed that five seconds of information and it did not go into your mind the way that you think it did. You will have to reread that paragraph or rewatch that scene because the way your mind is designed, things come in a certain way. And I know this, I've read the books. You know, going back to that book about subliminal advertising and images and stuff, that is going on on a very high level right now. It is a very high level. And if you disconnect, and that's why I think a lot of people with uh, the means go to the cabin, go to the lake, and they they really don't take the internet up there. Or they, I, I think they just connect so they can actually be aware because once you become immersed in this stuff, it's very hard for you to separate it. Because when I sit back and I watch television, it's because I'm a marketer and I read up on it. I know exactly what pitch is going on. I use, at what point, and it, it's weird. It's, I don't watch television and stuff the same way I used to. It's like, oh, that's what you're doing. Reading the 48 Laws of Power. And another thing on this, many people's like, well, hey, you know, the people reading the 48 Laws of Power so they can do that stuff to people. Right? No, read it so you know when other people are trying to do it to you. That's why I read it. And that stuff still works in 2014. Because people, I know that's going to be very controversial, in many ways have de-evolved. I know you're thinking, whoa, 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 no, we've evolved. No, no, no. This is going to esoteric level. So human beings built the pyramids, right? As far as we know. I mean, unless aliens came down and did it, I don't know. But to me, that and other mysteries of the world means that we had abilities, technologies, and stuff that we no longer have, which to me is the evolution. Because the more time that I spend working on my mind, reading books, meditating, the stronger my focus comes becomes, and I can do so much more in less time, which goes back to the technical difficulties thing. If you want to be really productive, do not fill up your day and cram every second full of activities. I know that looks productive to the outside world, but to your inner world, it looks like you're scattered as fuck because you are. One of the reasons that I've been able to do so much because it looks like you put out all these videos, you have the blog, you've got this stuff, you got these courses, is my day is not jam-packed full of stuff. I don't just do stuff because it's like, hey, you know, I need to be... I don't have to look productive because I am productive. Notice the nuance of that. If you're truly productive, you don't have to look productive. And many people get caught up in what I call activity trap. It's like, hey, we're doing this, and we got Johnny and little Buku and all these and these activities. And, you know, it's just wonderful. It, it, it's wonderful. You know, he, little Johnny, you know, he's learning Dutch. And uh, after that, he's going to soccer, then he's going to karate, and then before we go home, he's going to stop by because there's this grand wizard who's going to teach him a little chess. And this is on Saturday. Yeah, Saturdays are slack days. You know, Monday through Friday, we go hard. Uh, this overscheduling of kids, I think, is ridiculous. That's my only, that's my opinion. But people do that because it looks good. It's like, what are you doing? Well, we did this, we did this. And it's living a life based on volume metrics versus productivity metrics. Because if you could write one book a year, right, that makes you uh, 250000 and you write that book in a month. You've got 11 months off and you've got the money to support yourself in a grand fashion. Or you could work your ass off 45, 55, 60 hours a week, include the time that it takes to get dressed and go to work and make 50,000 and then try to create all these distractions in your life so you actually feel that your life is the one you want. Just saying. Something for you to think about, technical difficulties, life and such. All right, this is Glendon. I'll see you on the good side.